Hi friends, in the last video we looked at Copernical binary isomorphous phase diagrams and we briefly described it, what is there on the y-axis and what is plotted on the x-axis and what it represents. Now we need to interpret the diagram in more detail. Interpretation of a phase diagram mainly uh, involves determining these things. What are the different phases present? What are the different composition or sorry, what is the composition of each of these individual phases that are present there in the system? Now, having known that, okay, these are the different phases present in the system. If I take one kg of my whole alloy, what will be the fraction of or the percentage of these phases? So we will have a look into all these things. Again, we will take the example of the Copernical phase diagram. First of all, I need to make a correction. Apologies for the error. In the previous video, alpha was written here. It is actually wrong. Alpha should be here. The solid solution, the substitutional solid solution phase of copper and nickel is referred to as alpha. So this is simply liquid. So please take care of that particular thing in the previous video. Now, the first thing we are going to do is understand what are the different phases present in a system. So I have shown here three different points, A, B, C. The first question, how you determine those three points? So once I know the composition of my alloy and I know the temperature at which it is situated or at which it is and its temperature, then I can fix this point A, B, C. Let's say three different composition at three different temperatures. Now have a look at A. How many phases are present in uh, present in this particular alloy? It's a single phase. It, the phase is alpha solid solution of copper and nickel. Now, go ahead. What are the different phases present for a system corresponding to point B? There are two phases. One is a liquid and the other is a solid. Now, I'm not going to talk about the composition of these individual phases. I'm just interested in figuring out the number of phases present in the system. So okay with that. Now moving to the third, again different temperature at different alloy composition. I have fixed up, I have fixed the point C. Now the number of phases present in this system, you can pause the video, come up with an answer. So the answer is, again, there is only one single phase present in this corresponding to this particular point C also, and that is a liquid phase, okay? Having found the number of phases present corresponding to each of these points, now the next question is, what is the composition of these individual phases? So, the point to be noted is that let's start off with point B. Here I have only one single phase which is the liquid phase. So I don't have to compute the composition of multiple phases. I just need to compute the composition of one single phase. In this case, let's say I have 60% nickel and 40% copper. The composition of the overall overall composition of the alloy is exactly same as the composition of the phase i hope you are understanding the difference between the overall composition of the alloy which is plotted in the x axis and the composition of individual phases here in this case there is only one single phase present in the system which is the liquid state liquid phase so this liquid phase composition is exactly same as that of the overall alloy composition while coming to point a first it corresponds to 20 percentage nickel and 80 percentage copper this point corresponds to two phases we have both solid and liquid the question arises now what is the composition of the solid phase and what is the composition of the liquid phase so the way to figure out that or the answer to uh, the method to find an answer for that particular question goes like this 
you draw a horizontal line like this this is called tie line now this tie line will intersect the solidus and liquidus line at two points as shown here so these are the intersection points of the tie line with the liquidus and solidus line the next step is you draw perpendiculars from these points as shown here you draw perpendiculars lines as shown here then you will meet certain points you will meet at certain points in the x axis as shown here like this then the composition of the liquid phase is this 50 percentage nickel and 85 percentage copper now the okay there were two phases liquid and solid i got the composition of my liquid phase now what is the composition of the solid phase the composition of the solid phase is 60 percentage nickel and 40 percentage copper so making get making sense or not so watch it carefully how we did it we we drew a tie line we took the points where it intersected the liquidus and solidus then we dropped perpendiculars from these two points then we figured out the composition of individual phases now we have two phases we know the individual composition of these two phases now what will be the fraction of these phases present in a certain amount of alloy say i take one kg of alloy at this particular composition everything same 1200 degree centigrade temperature and 20 percentage nickel i'm taking one kg of this particular alloy at this particular temperature then what will be the fraction of liquid phase present in my system and what is the fraction of solid phase present in the system i figured out their individual compositions now the question is different what is the fraction of these two phases present the answer goes like this there is a particular rule called lever rule to help help us in calculating this relative fraction of the different phases let me explain it so here take an example that i have a 20 percentage nickel 80 percentage copper alloy at a temperature of 1110 degrees centigrade so this is the point now i drew a tie line this is my tie line so these are the points at which the tie line intersects the liquidus and the solidus line and we have the composition of the individual phases the solid phase and the liquid phase now the length of the tie line uh, we are going to this is the tie line so the length from the this is the point which corresponds to the overall composition so there is a particular length here and there is a particular length for this particular segment of the line as well so let me call it with some name so let me call this xs and let me call this xl the underscript tells you the uh, the xl means the distance from this particular point which represents the overall composition to the liquidus and xs represents the distance from this particular point to the intersection point with the solidus now the fraction of the solid phase present will be xs divided by xs divided by sorry 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 this is a mistake that people usually do so uh, let me correct it so if you want to calculate the fraction of the solid it will be xl divided by xs plus in the denominator you have the total tie length similarly if you want a fraction of the liquid phase present then it would be xx divided by the total line of the total length of the tie line so that's a difference so in the denom in the numerator you will have xl when you are calculating the fraction of solid phase and in the numerator you will have xx which is the distance to the solidus when you are calculating the fraction of liquid present in the same rule can be written in words like this the fraction of one phase is given as length of the tie line from the overall composition point 
to the other phase boundary so if i am calculating the fraction of liquid phase present in the system then my phase bound i will be looking towards my solidus boundary if i am looking uh, for the fraction of liquid phase present if it conversely if when i am calculating the fraction of solid phase present then i will be looking towards the liquidus boundary and the denominator remains the same see this can be also thought um, looked as an ex with an analogy from simple mechanics like let's say i have a 10 kg here then this distance will be small like 10 then this should be 100 so that's why the, the simple liver uh, taking an analogy from liver simple liver in mechanics we can understand or we can appreciate this principle much better so when see the amount of this weight is corresponds or is proportional to the length to the length to the other mass length from the pivot point to the other mass similarly the weight at this particular end is proportional to the length between the pivot and the other end not the same end so this is a simple analogy from mechanics which you can remember uh, so that these concepts will be kind of forged into your brain thanks for watching